everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the cozy Christmas tree skirt. Now this is a fun Christmas tree skirt to work. You can work it in multiple sizes depending on the size and style of tree that you have at home. And it's super, super cozy. It's fairly quick to work up. It's made with a super bulky weight yarn. And uh, this is <laughs> just one piece of it here. There's lots of other photos up on my website. But you can see that it's quite plush and uh, very cozy to have around your Christmas tree. Today for the pattern, we're going to be using a super bulky weight yarn. I've used the Woolies Thick and Quick by Lion Brand. This is the bonus bundle. There's about 212 yards per ball, and you're going to need three of these for the size that I'm working. The size that I'm working is a 36 inch diameter with a six inch diameter opening for your tree stand. Uh, again, I'll go over how you can adjust the size of it later on in the video. You're also going to need a 10 millimeter crochet hook, a couple of buttons. These buttons are about two inches across, uh, a little bit larger just because of the bulky weight yarn, and then as well a yarn needle for finishing off. So thank you so much for joining me. A free written copy of this pattern can be found on my website at richtexturescrochet.com. There's a direct link for you in the description of this video. Thank you so much for joining me. While you're here, don't forget to subscribe. Take a look around. There's lots of other uh, free crochet patterns here, including a matching Christmas stocking uh, if you're interested. And uh, I'll try to link that in the cards later on in this video. So our design today is worked in rows. So we're going to start by making a slip knot and then by working a foundation chain and your foundation chain is going to be a total of 29 stitches. Uh, now you can work any length of chain for this pattern. Uh, multiples are not too important so if you need to make a larger opening feel free to work a longer chain. Today I'm going to work 29. And 29. Once you have your foundation chain worked, you're going to simply single crochet into the second chain from your hook and then single crochet into each stitch all the way across. At the end of your row one you'll have a total of 28 stitches. You're going to chain three and turn your work. The chain three counts as a double crochet stitch, so each time you come back around to it, you're going to work into the top of it as you would a double crochet. For row two, we're going to double crochet into the first stitch. So this is the stitch at the base of your turning chain, double crochet. Next, double crochet into each of the next two stitches. Then work two double crochets into your next stitch. We're now going to repeat. Work one double crochet into each of the next two stitches, followed by two double crochet stitches into your next stitch. Repeat this all the way across at the end of this row you'll have a total of 38 stitches. At the end of your row two, you've worked your two double crochets into your final stitch. You're going to chain three, which counts as a double crochet stitch, and turn your work. You should notice that your work has a little bit of a curl to it now. It won't completely touch because we are going to be working and edging, uh, along these two ends here. 
So once you've chained three, turn your work, you're going to work a double crochet into that same stitch, so at the base of your turning chain, and then work a double crochet into each of the next three stitches. Next, work two double crochets into the next stitch. We're now going to repeat, work one double crochet into each of the next three stitches. Followed by two double crochet stitches into your next stitch. Repeat that all the way across at the end of this row three, you will have a total of 48 stitches. When you come all the way across at the end of round three, you will double crochet into your final stitch. You'll have a total of 48 stitches, chain three, and turn your work. For row four, we're going to double crochet into our first stitch, and then work one double crochet into each of the next four stitches. Next, work two double crochets into your next stitch, and then repeat one double crochet into each of the next four stitches. Followed by two double crochets into your next stitch. Repeat that all the way across. When you come all the way across, working your repeats in row four, you will have two remaining stitches, including that turning chain, so you're going to double crochet into each of those remaining stitches. At the end of your round four, you'll have a total of 58 stitches. For round five, we're going to chain three and turn our work. Double crochet into that first stitch at the base of your turning chain. Then work one double crochet into each of the next five stitches. Two double crochets into your next stitch. You're going to repeat that one double crochet into each of the next five stitches. Followed by two double crochets in your next stitch all the way across. You'll work a double crochet in your remaining three stitches. And then at the end of this row, you will have a total of 68 double crochets. At the end of row five, you're going to have a total of 68 stitches. You're going to chain three, which counts as a double crochet stitch and turn your work. For row six, double crochet into that first stitch. You're then going to work one double crochet into each of the next six stitches.
work two double crochets into the next stitch. You're going to repeat that, work one double crochet into each of the next six stitches. and two double crochets into your next stitch. Repeat that until you have four stitches remaining. Work one double crochet in each of your final four stitches and at the end of round six you'll have a total of 78 stitches. For row seven, you're going to chain three and turn your work. You're then going to double crochet into your first stitch. Work one double crochet into each of the next seven stitches. followed by two double crochets into your next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way across, one double crochet into each of the next seven stitches, followed by two double crochets into the next stitch, until you have five stitches remaining and then you'll work a double crochet into each of those final five stitches. At the end of row seven, you'll have a total of 88 double crochets. At the end of row seven, we're going to switch up the pattern a little bit and start adding in some of that uh, plush cozy texture. So what we're going to do at the end of row seven, you're going to chain five and turn your work. We're now going to slip stitch into the next stitch but into our back loop only. So at the top of your stitch you have the loop that is closest to you, that's your front loop, and then you have this loop in back, that's your back loop. So you've chained five, you're simply going to slip stitch into the back loop only of the next stitch. You're then going to repeat that chain five and slip stitch into the back loop only of the next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way across. Chain five and slip stitch into the back loop only of the next stitch. At the end of row eight, you will slip stitch uh, once again into the back loop only of that final stitch, which is your chain three. And then chain three and turn your work. We're now going to work another double crochet round. This time, once again, working in the back loops only of your stitches. So um, the loop that is closest to you that has your chain loop coming out of it, that is now your front loop. And then once again, the furthest loop away from you is your back loop. So you're going to start by working under the back loop only of that turning chain and work one double crochet. You're then going to pick up the pattern where you left off and work in the back loop only, work a double crochet 
into each of the next eight stitches. And then work two double crochet stitches into the back loop only of your next stitch. As you're working, you want to make sure that you're pushing your loops uh, forward so that they're on the front side of your work. You're then going to repeat that, work one double crochet in each of the next eight stitches, working in the back loop only, followed by two double crochets into your next stitch all the way across. For round 10, you're once again going to chain 5 and turn your work. We're now going to, just as we did for row 8, we're going to, working in our back loop only, slip stitch into the next stitch, chain 5, and slip stitch into the back loop only of the next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way across, chain 5, slip stitch into the back loop only of the next stitch, all the way across and that will bring you to the end of your round, or row 10. At the end of row 10, you're then going to chain three, once again, and turn your work. Now for row 11, and I am gonna pause uh, here and let you work the rest of it on your own. You're going to work another row of double crochet stitches, uh, this time working uh, a total of, let me see here, where did we leave off? This time working a double crochet in each of the next nine stitches, followed by your two, and then uh, repeat that across, and then you're going to work a row of chain stitches. You're going to continue alternating between your double crochet rows, increasing your stitches every time, and your chain stitch rows until you have a total of 22 rows. So this is going to get much, much wider, and uh, it's going to again measure about 36 inches across. If you would like a uh, larger tree skirt. You can continue working rows for as long as you would like or if you'd like one that's smaller you can stop at any point. At the end of row 22, so you'll have more of these loop rows, at the end of row 22 you're going to work one final row before we work our edging. So you'll end off on a chain loop stitch. You're then going to in the back loop only single crochet into that first stitch and then single crochet into each stitch all the way across. So this is for our final row 23. Row 23, single crochet in the back loop only of each stitch all the way across. Once you come across at the end of your row 23, so you've worked your final row of single crochet stitches, you're then ready to begin your edging. And this is going to include our space for our buttons as well as our buttonholes. So what we're going to do is you're going to turn your work so that you're working along this rough edge and yours will be a little bit, uh, again, larger than mine because I haven't worked the full 23 rows here. So it's going to be a little bit longer and you're going to be working along this rough edge. What you're going to do is you can fasten off if you'd like and then rejoin 
or as I'm going to do here, I'm simply going to chain one. My yarn is still attached and you're going to work 26 single crochet stitches evenly along this rough edge. You can, if you have changed the size of your tree skirt as I have done here today, you can work a uh, more or less stitches along the side. Just make sure that you make note of it as you will need to work the same number of stitches on the opposite side. You'll also want to keep note of it uh, in order to make sure that you evenly space your buttonholes. Uh, along the short end here. So you're just going to continue working your single crochet stitches. Work about 26 or so along this edge. I'm just inserting my hook where it is comfortable because there's no pretty places to put it. All the way across. When you come, I'm going to work one more in the corner. When you come to the end, you're going to, for the first side, chain one, turn your work, and you're then going to work four more rows of single crochet stitches. So that's for your first side. You'll just have a total of five rows of single crochet fasten off, weave in your ends. Again, this is all uh, written in the written pattern, which is on richtexturescrochet.com. Then you're going to go across and work your second side. Once again, working the 26 stitches. Then for row two, you're going to chain one and turn and work a single crochet into each stitch all the way across. So this is for side two. Just going to keep working. All the way across. At the end of row two, for side two, you're going to, let me see here, chain one and turn your work. And if you have worked 26 stitches along the side, you're going to work two buttonholes. To work your buttonholes, you're going to single crochet into the first stitch and then single crochet into each of the next four stitches. Now I've used a two inch button so it's fairly large. You can change the size of your hole if you'd like, but for my button I chained three, skip the next three stitches, and single crochet into each of the next ten stitches. Now if you change the size as I have, you're going to want to adjust it again to make sure that you have the same number of stitches worked on the other side. So I have one, two, three, four, five, then my buttonhole, one, two, three. So I'm going to work a single crochet into the next stitch. If you've worked 26 stitches, go ahead and work a single crochet in each of the next 10 stitches, then chain three, skip three and single crochet into each of the final five stitches. You're then going to chain one and turn your work. For row four of the side two, you're going to single crochet into each of the next five stitches.
Next, single crochet into each chain stitch. So I've worked three chain stitches, single crochet into each chain stitch. You can work right into the space if you would like. You're then going to single crochet into the next 10 stitches if you've worked a total of 26. But because I've shortened it quite a bit, I'm going to single crochet in my next two. Then single crochet into your next three chain stitches. And single crochet into each of the final five stitches. Chain one and turn your work and for your side two you're simply going to work one more row of single crochet stitches. Once you have finished your side two and your side one is complete, you're then going to uh, place your buttons and make sure that they line up with your buttonholes. So I'd lay the entire tree skirt out flat. Make sure your two ends join and uh, place the buttonholes over top of those two ends and then mark the place for your buttons. Once you have your buttons fastened on, you can go ahead, weave in any ends, uh, go through your project, weave in any other ends that might be hanging around, and uh, fasten them off. And that is it. That's all there is to working your cozy tree skirt. So be sure to grab that written pattern on richtexturescrochet.com. Other than that, enjoy. Happy holidays and happy crocheting. Bye.